You've given a speech at the ANU Security Conference today, Andrew Hasty. You've spoken about Australia being in a fog at a time of chilling threat assessments and that there's a vast gap between closed-door analytical consensus and what's kind of expressed publicly by the government. You've asked, how can we defeat our national threats if no one is clear about what the threat is? In plain words, explain to us what that threat is that the government knows about but is not properly explaining to the rest of us. Well, as I said this morning, authoritarian powers are on the move. China, Russia, North Korea, Iran and their proxies, Hamas and Houthi rebels, to name a few, are destabilising uh, the American-led world or, or, or global order, which Don't we pick that we, up daily, though we, we, we do. But but um, the government is undergoing a, a form of self-censorship. We've seen that over the last few months, particularly as uh, they've worked hard to uh, win concessions from the, the Chinese government. They're pulling their punches, are they? They are pulling their punches. Curry and, diplomatic. And, and, Favor? Well, we, we want to have a good relationship with China, absolutely. But we can't ignore that China is undergoing the biggest peacetime military, uh, biggest build-up uh, uh, since the end of the Second World War. And um, that being the case, um, we, we need to... Well, that's the reason why we've, we've invested in AUKUS. And my point is we've got to be clear about the challenges that we face as a country because if we're not clear, then we have very vague goals. It makes it very difficult for us... Uh, to, to set defence policy and strategy, and we don't have the social licence for the sort of defence expenditure that we're going to need with AUKUS and other associated capabilities. OK, so you didn't use these words in your speech, but would it be fair to encapsulate what you're saying is you want Richard Miles and others to use more hawkish language towards China and others? And if so, where, where would that get us compared to the deployment of such language by, say, the Morrison government? No, not, hawk, not hawkish language at all. Just to be clear about what the challenges are. Um, Penny Wong uses words like preventative architecture. Richard Miles uses words like impactful projection. Uh, my question is, what does that actually mean? The vast majority of Australians don't have a clue what it means, and that being the case, how then can they go to the Australian people and argue that we spend more money on defence? Mm. You go behind closed doors... The briefings are very clear what the threat is and what the challenges are. You step out and there's a massive gap between the analytical consensus and what our uh, relevant leaders in foreign policy and defence policy actually say to the Australian public. All right, well, you've issued the challenge. We'll see if there's any shift in tone or emphasis from the incumbent government.